Now, it's no secret that software engineer salaries can get extremely high in even for fresh new grads. But this video is sort of going to go over how realistic that actually is and what factors go into determining a software engineer's salary using both research that I've done as well as just from my own personal experience. And just as a note, this is purely restricted to the United States. Now, first, it's important to get some baselines. According to the census in 2020, the average median household income was $67,521. But that isn't incredibly insightful by itself because there are a lot of different factors that play into a household median income. But we can also look at average salary based on education level. That's sort of another vector we can go down. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average salary of someone with a bachelor's degree is $64,896. Now this gives us a little bit more of a comparable baseline as I'm going to assume that most software engineers have just a bachelor's degree because generally you don't really need to get a master's degree unless you're trying to pursue a very specific or niche area like machine learning or AI or uh, I don't know robotics or you know some other type of field but we can even investigate this a little bit more according to CNPC quoting a NACE study that in 2019 the average starting salary for a new grad pursuing a bachelor's degree was $53,889 and from the same study, those specifically studying computer science were projected to have an average starting salary of actually $72,173 for the class of 2021. So we can see that the average projected income of CS new grads was actually about 20 grand higher than just the average bachelor's degree. So that definitely supports the case of, you know, higher software engineer salaries. But now instead of restricting it to just new grads, the average software engineer salary in 2021 in the broad United States was $99,579, and that was according to Indeed. So in 2021, the average salary for the computer science students that are likely going to become software engineers was around $72,000, and the broader software engineer category, including, you know, all ranges of experiences and you know, locations and companies was about 100,000. Now we have a lot of data, but it is important to note that a lot of this data can sort of vary based on the source you look at. So you can find all of the resources I got this information from in the description below. Some of the years are also different, so the data might not be super comparable, but I still think it does a good job of showing how both new grad CS students and existing software engineers have pretty high salaries compared to just the average, at least in the United States. But what factors actually go into determining some of these software engineer salaries? One major factor is obviously just the cost of living in that area. A lot of FANG and big end companies have, you know, their headquarters or big offices in really, really large metropolitan centers, and those metropolitan centers like New York City, Seattle, San Francisco, all have really high costs of living. Therefore, in order to compensate for this high cost of living, if they're making you move to that location from somewhere else, they need to compensate you more because just everything there is more expensive. And we can even see more recent evidence of this with Google's new policy where they're actually going to decrease salaries for remote workers that are working in lower cost of living areas. Now, it might not actually be a tangible difference. Now, the raw number might decrease, the raw salary number, you might, you know, on paper be earning less money, but your dollar might go further in, say, Wisconsin than it does in downtown Manhattan. So you might actually be able to buy more earning 80 grand in Wisconsin than you would be earning 150K in Manhattan. Another factor is these tech companies make a lot of money and therefore can sort of afford to pay very high salaries. And if we simply just look at the companies with the highest market cap in 2021, within the top 10, seven are strictly tech companies. So another factor in software engineer salaries is overall just high demand. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, software developer positions are expected to grow by 22% between 2020 and 2030, which is much faster than the average. Now, it may seem like there are a ton of computer science students and a ton of software engineers out there, but if we actually look at the data, according to DAX, at the end of 2020, there were a total of 1.4 million unfilled computer science jobs and only about 400,000 
new CS students graduate every year. Therefore, just a high demand with a low supply will naturally increase the starting salaries or the average salaries of those in demand positions. And if we consider for a second where the overall world is kind of headed, everything is going to be integrated with technology in some sort of way. Almost every company nowadays needs some sort of software engineer, software developer, web developer, IT specialist, someone that's able to work with technology. And that's to even just develop their website, maintain a database, something. Pretty much every company needs some sort of tech to operate in the modern era. So from my perspective, software engineers can sort of just be applicable to almost any industry. So overall, if we just look at the factors again, we see that high cost of living tech hubs, these massive tech companies that make tons of money, able to pay their employees really, really well compared to the average, a relatively low supply with a high demand, and just overall broad applicability of software engineers are the reasons why I sort of think that software engineer salaries are just generally much more higher than the median or other comparable career paths at the same education level. Now, this video wasn't meant to sort of investigate whether these salaries were fair or you know, if they're underpaid or if they're overpaid, I'm just saying here are the reasons why I think those software engineer salaries actually are high. So again, you can find all of the data that I used in the description below in case you want to dive a little bit deeper into it. I've made a couple videos previously about software engineer salaries or, you know, other computer science or tech career related salaries. So I can list some of those videos in the description below too, if you want to check those out. I hope you all found the video useful. Comment down below about what you think think are the reasons why software engineer salaries or computer science salaries coming out of college are relatively higher than, you know, other areas of studying or other career paths. Again, I just want to stress that I don't think everyone should study computer science purely for, you know, the salary goals. I think you should study whatever you want to study or do whatever you want to do. Not everyone should study computer science. Not everyone should study one particular topic. Differing perspectives is always a good thing. I think. If you are looking for minimalist programmer clothes, check out some of the designs I've been designing over at nullref.co. My name is Michael. We do Bob British accents at the end of every video. Check out one of my past videos in my past self with Thank You Dearly, and check out one of my future videos in my future self would also Thank You Dearly. That's all from me. We make tech, computer science, programmer, computer science, I already said that, type of videos on this channel. If any of that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. Like this video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm and hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.